what a video i have for you all today i'm so happy i'm so happy i'm so happy now today i'm going to give you some history about the yellow pond right yellow pond this is it this is the yellow pond i'm going to give you some history of saint thomas because this is what this you know this channel is all about I'm going to give you some information about the parish about the yellow pond show you some developments on the road construction but isn't it beautiful so what i want you guys look at the, look at this salt at my foot right so today we're going to have a jam-packed video because it's history of st thomas yellow pond so come come along with me as we have this video today hi everyone i'm cnj and welcome to CNG Jamaica. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah. I left the house and said, let, a, let me show you all a little of the development on the roads. Let me just say that there is some new signage going up on the route from Yalas to Kingston. So you'll see uh, signage as to the bus stop and parking and mileage signs and so on so you're going to be i'm going to yellow pond because i want to thank anthony anthony 05 one of my subscribers he asked me this week to showcase yellow pond so remember guys if you have a particular place in st thomas that you'd like me to showcase please put it in the chat all right a particular part of the road development that you'd like me to show also put that in the chat but while i show you the development in the yellows area today i'm going to give you a little history of our parish for the persons who may have forgotten or the persons who just don't know so enjoy guys remember to like share and subscribe and if you have a particular place you want me to show put it in the chat and guys i heard what many of you were saying last week that the video was a little fast so i've slowed it down this week so i hope you do watch until the end all right so you see there is a little just a little change still on dirt here in yellows but uh it's going slowly but surely well let us go a little while you watch the renovations on the road or the slowness of what is happening let me give you a little of the history of st thomas for the persons who don't know or i'm reminding you the parish of st thomas is located along the south eastern coast of jamaica and is bordered by St. Andrew on the western end, Portland on the northern end, and the Caribbean Sea on the southern end. So everybody in, in Yalas, or even St. Thomas, we we can go to the sea easily, right? If I turn a little to the right and just go a little down, you will all see the sea. But as I go forward, there's a new gas station in the parish. There's a new gas station. And it is coming up on my left all right in this gas station there is a pharmacy i think it's shop right all right and then there's also a water fountain a water station you can go and get your gallons of water for all the persons who, who don't drink directly from the tap i hear that there would be a kfc in this gas station as well let us see if it actually happened so here i'm giving you just a short little look a short little look on this new gas station in the yalas area all right well let me continue with the history of saint thomas now originally the name of the parish was saint thomas in the east and it was so named because they wanted to distinguish it from St. Thomas in the Vale, all right, which is in, which was in uh, St. Thomas, St. Catherine, sorry. So St. Thomas was combined with the old parish of St. David, and it is considered to be one of the oldest parish in Jamaica, all right, at St. Thomas for you. His historic uh, legacy dates back to the 15th century, as some historians have noted that when Columbus arrived, 
he was first met by a strong Taino presence in the parish and St. Thomas was therefore one of the earliest areas of settlement in Jamaica. Can you imagine we were one of the earliest and now some people will say we are one of the most backward. Maybe it's because we started so long ago. Now the name St. Thomas was derived from two possible governors of Jamaica. Uh, Sir Thomas uh, Modiford or Thomas Hickman Lord Windsor. There are some historians who argue that St. Thomas was so called before the arrival of uh, Mr. Sir uh, Modiford. So Thomas Hickman Lord Windsor is who the parish may have been named after and that was in 1662. Wow. Now, Mart Bay is the capital of St. Thomas and was identified as the chief town and shipping port in the parish. All right, so we're still driving on dirt. <laughs> so you're getting some history lesson while you're seeing the view. Now, shortly after the English occupied in 1655, it was called Freeman Bay, all right, named after Thomas Freeman, who owned a large tract of land uh, uh, here in the parish. Initially, the town was said to have been first laid out by Peter Ballet and was called Petersburg. It is uncertain when exactly the capital finally became known as Mount Bay. Now, the first set of people to settle in St. Thomas was the Tainos, the Arawaks, right? And they were already present in the island when Columbus came and said he discovered the place, right? The Spaniards, after settling, established cattle ranches at Morante. And this location would later be known as Morant Bay. All right, so we're going, we are, and now we're going into Yellow Bay right now. Beautiful sky, right? Beautiful blue sky on that Saturday morning here. Now, a year after the island was captured by the English, the earliest English settlers included soldiers that were sent to colonize the Morant Bay area. And then shortly after the conquest and after corn well had acquired Jamaica, he set about inducing settlers to come to the island. And you know what? A group of approximately 1,600 persons from Nevis, including Major Lockstone, and he was a governor of Nevis, arrived in the parish. Some settlers found it difficult to adjust to their new home, and they did not survive too long after living in St. Thomas. In a couple of months, up to two-thirds of the colonists including Major Stone or Major Strokes and his wife died of fever. And many of you know about Strokes Hall in the parish, right? Uh, now Major Strokes was survived by his children who became quite wealthy and established two imposing houses uh, which are still there today, Stokes Hall and Stokes Field. Now, when I got into Yalas Bay, you know, the traffic was, ha, it was a Saturday morning, you know, long waits, roads not so nice and all, but it's Yalas Bay, what do you expect? All right, so here we are in the Yalas Bay area. Mm -hmm. Guys, okay, sorry for the video. Okay. I hope it's steady for us this week. I got some comments that it wasn't so steady last week and a little fuzzy. So I try to make it a little better for you all this week. Now we normally talk, when we talk about St. Thomas, we talk about the Maroons, right? Well, so out of all the groups of persons who settled in the parish of St. Thomas, the chief settlers were the Maroons. Now these Maroons were ex-slaves who ran away to the mountains and joined other bands of Maroons who had fled their captors because of ill treatment, all right, and who did not want to be enslaved. In later years, bands of Maroons settled in the mountain areas of St. Thomas and eventually joined with those in Portland. Now you soon see something here on this road here, you know, look, 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 look. I was wondering where to go because I saw a tractor ahead digging up the main road. So I was wondering, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, 
what do I do? But I saw this, this vehicle before me, seemed very, very daring. And I said, let me follow, let me follow, let me follow. And look at this. This is the main road, but they have to dig it up to fix it. So they were digging off the asphalt that has been there for years to make a way for the new road surface. So as I talk, as I look, give the history, look at what is happening here. We're driving while it's being constructed. But let me give you some more information about the Maroons before we get to Yalas Pond. Because that is our destination, Yalas Pond. So me passing there, passing like my brave. <laughs> now, these slaves, they ran away from their, uh, their capturers, right? And they went up into the mountain areas of St. Saint Thomas. And they joined up with those who were in Portland. Because remember, we bought a Portland, right? And that formed the Windward Maroons. They set up an independent community, resiliently fought for many years against the English, and even had some levels of success. As the English had a signed peace treaty between themselves and the Maroons, right? Because they realized they couldn't capture them. Maroons are still present in today's society in their respective communities in St. Thomas and other parishes. We're getting very near to where I turned off uh, for Yalas Pond. And today, remember, we're going to be looking on the Yalas Pond. As I go into our video next week, I'll give you some more history of St. Thomas. All right, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we're going to the Yalas Pond. I did a video uh, in 2020. It was June, actually. So I'm, a month, I'm, now I'm doing this in July. But June of 2020, I did a video on the Yalas Pond. It was very short, about eight minutes. And you can go and look for it. Remember, my channel is CNG Jamaica. And there's a nice little short video about uh, the Yalas Pond that you can see. But I'm going to give you the 2023 version in a little bit. So you're seeing all that is happening in the road uh, renovation for the Yalas area this week. But I wanted to add on a little bit more. Be engaged with my channel a little bit more as I go and show you the Yalas Pond. I'm so excited. Because that's a natural resource that we have here in the parish. That is, I think it's underutilized. I think it, it, maybe it's the, the capital incentive some of us don't have or the rights to it or so. But uh, investors, I think a lot can be done with St. Thomas. And I think the pond is one area that can be developed even more. All right, it can be so. Let's go. We're going to turn to the pond now. So actually, when you get to a little out of Yalas Bay, then you will find the pond. So it's a right turn. And this is the route to Yalas Pond. This community is actually called Green Bay. All right. So you have the Yalas Pond to the left and to the right you have Green Bay Beach. Ponds sank, leaving pockets of seawater almost completely enclosed by land. And you know what they said? Due to evaporation, the water in the pond is extremely saline. At times recorded as being 15 times saltier than sea water can you imagine 15 times saltier than sea water and when you look at all this salt and foam that you see on the coast shore you can realize that that look like it's actually is so <laughs> now besides that respective theory or that respected theory there are a number of other very interesting stories about the origin of the twin salt ponds in Yalas. I know one very popular one is that, and guys, you're seeing uh, the community here. Some say that the ponds were once the family property, all right? A family owned it, 
It was under the control of two brothers. But then there was a dispute between the brothers. And they had the dispute because they both loved one woman. So listen to a, a, a local as he talks about what he uses the pond for. Fish, can you imagine? So listen. Sorry for the low audio quality. It was very windy. So what, what your four parents told you about this pond? It's not this color all the time. This one. This yes. one mostly carry this color most time. But the other one of what? Bigger one? Yes. Carry a um, bluer color. Bluer color, okay. So it is safe to go in there. Is there a crocodile in there? I see crocodile in there. Mm. I see crocodile in there more than once. Well, than has one. it harmed anybody around this side? No, never learned of any harm. Um, these crocodiles. Okay, okay. But you have seen. But you have seen them. Okay. So would you put? Would you uh, say go on it on a boat? Yeah. And I walk out in sometimes. Walk. Yeah, just walk out. <laughs> show like You got there for fine fish. Why, why, why you walk out there? Just put in sometimes. This is a mineral day. Oh. You ask a good question here, but yeah, yeah. This is a mineral day. Like more time, it's come around in the rushes and here. Yes. Yes. They come and get them in the pond two or three times. They clean up nice, clean up the fish. Eh? Hey, oh, because of the salt in the water. Yeah, the mineral. Mm -hmm. As I listened to him talk more about this wonderful piece of nature, I was reminded of the full story. So, for the persons who want to know the the fork law, the fork law. Uh, the fairy tale <laughs> let me just say that they said there were two brothers who were in love with the same woman and one brother was married to the lady and the other one had an affair while the brother who was the husband was away in Kingston and when he found out about the affair he was so devastated by the betrayal that he cried so hard that his tears turned into two ponds in which the offending brother and his wife drowned. But then that same story is said differently that the brother fought brutally with his other brother and chopped him to death. Thus the red color that the pond sometimes assume is because of that. All right. But let us say that the science, the science behind it says that it's because of the, the, the color of the water that range from brownish to greenish and pinkish and yellowish mm -hmm. and reddish is because of the saline and the bacteria level in the water. All right. But the things I will love a nice romance story and symbolism and so on. But uh, it is, as I said before, because of the earthquake of 1692, these two pockets of water were trapped, right? And you know what happens after all of that, all right? So there's more for him to say here because I tell you, I love coming here. And I'm going to actually show you, remember I said, this little com uh, fishing community is between the Yalas Pond and the Caribbean Sea. I'm going to show you the beauty of the, uh, the little walk uh, from the pond to the Caribbean Sea so continue to watch for that I'm going to show that to you but let us little, uh, listen a little more to what he has to say about how he thinks this pond could be the developed for an uh, 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 income earner really for the parish of St. Thomas and this little area of Yalas because it's a lot it, 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 it spans a very wide area and we know of other places in the world where this uh, smaller pockets of water are utilized for a lot. Look at the beauty of the mountain, the beauty of the pond, the natural resource that's there. Would you like to live between the pond and the Caribbean Sea? <laughs> oh my God, I was just enjoying this day. I was enjoying this day. All right, so let us continue the journey. Let us continue the journey as we look on the beauty of nature, all that 
the land of St. Thomas of Jamaica has to offer. We drove along this little coast for a long while, uh, you know, wondering when it would end. And according to my little tour guide, we would, we would drive until we got just to the sea. All right, right to the Caribbean Sea. It's a little deserted, yes, but it is wonderful to be in commune with nature. Just a little off the main road, because the main road is just over there, just over there. Road, don't continue. So don't when you're know. driving from Kingston road, continue. to Portland, I wonder where it this end. route after the road is finished. When you look to the right, you will see the yellow pond. And if you have watched this little video, then you'll know all about it from the scientific Maybe go all the way to reason for the pond to the nice romantic symbolism uh, story. Yeah. Right, so guys, and Anthony, thank you again for reminding me of this nice resource that we have in our parish, St. Thomas, the Yalas Pond. And I, as I said before, I did a video in 2020. You guys can go and watch that on CNJ Jamaica. It's a shorter one, yes. And I have to have nice visuals. But here he goes again. Okay, so you can fish from this? Yeah, we fish from it, but most when the rain falls. Oh. Like when I go down now, the fish then finish out without any catch any more in it. Oh, so the, so the fish that is in here is good to eat? Yeah, we eat them and sell them too. Eat them and sell them, okay. We come along to the band, don't see this going on. Uh huh. Like this time our four prints here come along. Alright, so we see a lot, of, a lot of possibilities here at the pond. Oh, yeah. Is can you remember some of them now? <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I understand the people they'll sell the salt. Okay, okay, okay. So you see, it's not just a place that we pass while we're driving on the road. It has a lot of possibilities. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Sand, salt, salt, and even more salt. Now, uh, this really was a wonderful trip down memory lane of my video of 2020. I watch my mom. She's always with me, giving support, and she loves these little trips. But remember, the thing is, because these were originally two detached bodies of water, they were separated from the sea by a narrow strip of land. All right? But in October 1902, they emitted an overpowering stench that went all the way to Kingston. And the thing is that in the 90s and the early 2000s, we got a little whiff of this as well, you know. You used to get some powerful odors. I carry it to the sea, guys. I carry it to the Caribbean Sea. Well, let me continue with the history. <laughs> now, it was eventually found that the hydrogen sulfite in the big pond created by a species of bacteria right that kind of was affected by rain it was the cause of the odor look at the view ah, i love the view the thing is that what they did to release right the stagnant water from the big pond a channel was created between it and the smaller one that's the one that you're seeing uh, that i've been showing you know the smaller pond and another between the smaller one and the sea so we're going up to the sea now. Follow me, follow me, follow me on my journey to the Caribbean Sea. All right. So they created a channel between the bigger pond and the smaller one for the water to flow. And then another between the smaller one and the sea. And you know, since they have done that, uh, they have had, they have not been two ponds independent of each other anymore because of the channel. And you see, when I told you about what happened in 1902, in 2013, there was another order being uh, sent out from the ponds to the corporate area again. And it was found again that there was a buildup of the hydrogen sulfate, just like in 1902. So the thing is that the gap between the small section and the sea was blocked by sand and debris. Don't litter Jamaica, people. Don't litter Jamaica. 
So because the debris blocked it, it was preventing the seawater from flowing into the pond to help to purify it. So in the dry season, when the water level is low and the water, is, and the, the water becomes saltier because of evaporation, it caused this odor to happen. So the excessive growth of algae on the pond caused the malfunctioning, all right, or it caused the manufacturing, sorry, of the hydrogen sulfate, which escaped into the air, causing the odor. A lot to learn, guys, a lot to learn, all right? The thing is that, remember, that when you pass the yellow pond, sometimes it looks, it has a dark yellowish look, sometimes it's white, sometimes it has many different colors and that's because of the millions of soil crystals that glitters on the surface all right and remember now that under the clear water it there are many different particles all right so when you hear that it's saltier than up at bath fountain and the sulfur and all of that come and see the yellow spawn but look at the beauty of yellows the beauty of saint thomas i Remember I said, this area, it's between the pond and the Caribbean Sea. There is the Caribbean Sea. There is the beauty of Jamaica. And the thing about living in, in Yalas, living in St. Thomas, you have the, the sea to one side, the mountain to the other. Look at the beauty of my parish. Guys, I could talk for hours and days about the beauty of St. Thomas. But let me show you. Let me show you. So we have roads under construction, right? We have beautiful beaches. Right here, so not some, it's, it's kind of dangerous. The water gets deep rather quickly because remember, we have a port, all right? Cow Bay is not far away. How many people want me to feature Cow Bay very soon? But well, there it is. Yalas Pond and the Caribbean Sea. It was a wonderful Saturday to be out and about. Remember guys to like, share and subscribe. And if you're here until this point, thank you so much for watching. All right. Thank you so much. But I just love the beauty of nature and all that it has in store. It's kind of a lonely place, you know, but it's beautiful. A house here would be great. You'd have to know that if the hurricane come <laughs> and if the pond overflow, there's a little risk there. But it is beautiful and a day trip here is great. It's great. So remember next week Beauty in Jamaica. Eh? Some more history of St. Thomas. Show you a little more of the road renovation, road construction, some more update. But listen to my friend as he calls out the video so would, what would you say like to the government or so that they could help to develop this to be like a income earner for the parish oh that would be great it's a good idea yeah but if they do it would be grateful because it could be helping a lot like you do the whole world not, mm -hmm. only, not only the parish mm -hmm. the whole world because I see where I go to bad fountain mm -hmm. and I see there are some of these same mud yes. treating people yes Minerally, yeah, yeah, yes. I know this one is stronger than bad for one mm, because of the, the strong salt, yeah, very strong. The sulfur and the salt, the sulfur and the salt, very salt. He believes in the healing power of the sulfur in this water. Said he will take his children there if they have any skin issue, and after they, they visit there about three times or more then the skin comes back perfect. He makes it a regular trip to go into the water from time to time. Now, when I heard him say that there's crocodile there, I said, mm-hmm, I don't think I'll be going into this water. <laughs> but as we say in Jamaica, to each his own. All right, to each his own. But let me just say it was wonderful, a wonderful day trip. I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, on the yellow pond. Anthony, if you have another place you want me to visit, let me know in the chat. Or for my other subscribers, let me know in the chat. Uh, I'll be happy to oblige as long as I can find it wherever the road goes.
In my video on 2020, I said beauty is just around the corner. And let me just say to you guys, the beauty is in us. It's around the corner. It's in the persons who we interact with. We just have to delve deeper and find it. Let us take nothing for granted. Let us enjoy each day as it comes. And even though at times it seems as if things are taking very long to happen, or it seems as if it's not going to happen, let us continue to have hope. For years we have called St. Thomas the Forgotten Parish, but I never thought I was forgotten. I knew that we have a lot to offer. CNJ Jamaica is all about that. So if you know of places that you want me to showcase in this parish, go ahead, man, bring it to my attention in the chat. And if I'm able to do so, I will. So thank you all, guys, for watching this video today. I run gone to the next adventure. <laughs> Woo! Hi, Here everyone. Thank you for watching. See you next time on CNJ Jamaica.